just talk to me a bit about the, I mean, some people will find this sort of astonishing, the, the kind of very confident re-emergence of Liz Truss. She is hosting a growth rally tomorrow. My sources tell me that is already sold out. You can't even get a ticket to get in. There's like a waiting list to get in. What is going on there? Well, it's a really good question, and I think people listening at home will be asking it too. The idea that Liz Truss has emerged uh, without even an extended period of hibernation and is making the argument for the very policies she was espousing from the, uh, from the podium last year as Prime Minister. I think, look, Liz, Tr that Liz Truss is coming out so confidently and arguing for the very things that ultimately accelerated her downfall is a reflection, one, look, of Liz Truss's brass neck, but two, that there is support for Rishi Sunak within his parliamentary party is quite shallow. And you have a lot of Tory MPs who want him to go further and faster on questions of tax, on questions of the economy. And I think, look, this is a sign that one, Liz Truss senses the Prime Minister is vulnerable, but also that Liz Truss has half an eye on the direction of the party after an election loss too. You don't think she'd have another well, shot look, on the look, title? No less an authority than <laughs> Bloomberg, uh, Bloom, Bloomberg report, uh, reported yesterday that Liz Truss uh, does want another shot at it. I haven't heard that from Liz Truss or her team myself, but I'm not one to doubt uh, the market-moving reporters of Bloomberg. So there you go, take it from them. Wow, I mean, you heard it here first. I mean, I, do, the, I mean, her chutzpah is incredible. I mean, most people, if they'd done like a tiny bit of that, would have probably got plastic surgery and moved to South <laughs> America and bought a canoe and like faked their own death. Like that's the territory. But it shows you that there is clearly a sense of vulnerability around um, Rishi Sunak. And also, part of it, I was just thinking. It's just an extraordinary year, right? Because this time last year, Kwasi Kwarteng had gone on Laura Koonsberg's show and had done that kind of jaw-dropping interview where he had indicated there might be more unfunded tax cuts to come. And, of course, the markets start to go berserk this time um, last year in, in the kind of hours and, and days afterwards. I mean, that was a great gift to the Labour. That's the point, right, where the gap starts opening up between Labour and the Tory party. Most political watchers go, OK, that is, the, that is the moment you basically gave the next election to the yeah, Labour party. it's the party. sort of Black Wednesday moment black after which the polls never shift again. And yet there are so many people wandering around this hall who want to go back there. Yes, exactly. Look, and Liz Truss would say, uh, like uh, Barry Goldwater, her great idol who uh, fought and lost the uh, US president's presidential election in 1968, it wasn't that the ideas were wrong, it was the execution was that, and the, pu uh, the execution was bad, and the public wasn't ready. So it is striking, uh, but, it, you know, it does, it does go to show that the right of the Conservative Party clearly think Rishi Sunak is vulnerable. Uh, they don't agree uh, with most of what he's doing, and it is a remarkable position for a parliamentary Conservative Party who's cycled through three leaders in one uh, parliament already to be taking, what, months out from an election? But, you know, this is a parliamentary party that we've seen in recent years doesn't necessarily play by the, uh, the rules and conventions of politics.